If Darth Vader raced at the 24 hours of Le Mans, this would be the spaceship he would choose. The 2016 version of the Audi R18. You can just see this car looks absolutely diabolical with its incredibly advanced aero. Perhaps one of the most radical sports prototypes ever constructed and certainly up till this date has that has raced at the 24 hours of Le Mans. This car was just added to Project Cars 2 as part of the Spirit of Le Mans DLC. Of course, its uh, LMP1H rivals have also been added, the Porsche 919 and the Toyota TS050. But in terms of real life and in the game, this is potentially my favorite of the LMP1H cars for 2016. I mean, just look at it. It's an absolutely spectacular looking car, and I've actually found that it drives really well at the Circuit de la Sarthe. Uh, I've been able to get pretty good lap time out of it. I can run three 18s pretty consistently in it, and that's a fairly reasonable time, and I think it'll be fairly competitive in what we're doing today, which is a 30-minute simulation of the 24 hours of Le Mans. We're going to have some GTE cars in there as well as some jam cars. We'll probably come through that field at least once during this day, but we're going to be battling with the other LMP1H cars in the field. What's great about Project Cars 2 or what they did with this DLC, which is so great, is they separated the LMP1 2016 cars from the regular 2016 cars. So if you want, you can just have a very historically accurate grid of LMP1 cars. And I really appreciate that because you guys know if you're a longtime viewer of this channel that I'm a stickler for historical accuracy. So this beautiful Audi R18 is my chariot today as I try to be Darth Vader and uh, stop the Death Star from being blown up today at Le Mans. Let's see if we can power on. So here we come down for the start at Le Mans. Six LMP1 cars, seven GTE cars, but curiously only one Toyota. I guess Fred wanted the day off, so standing in for Fred is one of the, quote, Fuji spec R18s, despite the fact that that car is in a Bahrain livery, so who knows, but we're underway using hybrid boost already down the main straightaway and underneath the lone Toyota in the field and heading up all the way up into the second row here as we head down into turn one for the first time going to let off the gas brake just a little bit try to get the car slowed down into whoa, a little bit of contact with the lm spec r18 which is technically i guess my teammate though both of the audis i suppose are my teammate that car is certainly the same spec as my car so generally you want to outdo him as the fuji spec car which has way more downforce than these cars do the lm spec cars uh jolts out in the lead but he shouldn't be there for very long especially because we have all this hybrid boost which i'm going to put an entire battery's worth into the car down the first leg of the molson here and i think that porsche is going to catch that audi very quickly uh, and yes you heard me right manual deployment for the hybrid there's a bit of a controversy in the community about that uh, but i would uh, suggest to everyone that it's better than the current system that they were using as the Porsche is very slow there for the 2014 hybrids which is just pretty much put your right foot down and hope that the game gives you some hybrid. Speaking of hybrid I generally don't like to use it on this portion of the Molson. I used a little bit more there but generally speaking I feel like it doesn't really gain you very much time even though you can see the Audi go around me and I'll demonstrate why here in just a second as we head into the second chicane. Is so we're going to try to outbreak me. I let him, and I go across the gravel there. Try not to get a penalty from the game, because the game is very anal about uh, penalties and running wide, though despite the fact that I cut the chicane pretty badly there, it didn't make me slow down. I guess I uh, gave myself a penalty for uh, going across the gravel trap on lap one. I guess it's better to do it on lap one than the last lap, eh, Jordan Taylor? Anyway, we're, we're back going down the, uh, the run to Indianapolis, and the hybrid cars are starting to pull away here a little bit, though I see some brake lights up there, so I think they're not really playing nice with each other down the run to Indianapolis here. Now, that Porsche 919, he's going to be tough to pass in a straight line because he actually regenerates hybrid energy in a straight line, which he can deploy at pretty much any time he wants. So that makes that car very potent around a track with a lot of straightaways like Le Mans. As we head down into the Porsche curves for the first time, 
got to remember that it doesn't go straight like the 1971 version down here. We've got to remember that because uh, if we go straight, we're going to be into a wall. But of course, the Porsche curves really aren't that far away from uh, being uh, flat out these days, especially in a 2016 LMP1 car. Very, very fast. We'll just put a wheel on the grass there. We'll use that little bit of hybrid boost I regenerated from breaking into the Porsche curves to try to catch this 919 out front. Not able to quite do it. Going to dance the car through the Ford chicane. That was very nice through there. Very nice. On the hybrid button, but I can't really go very much further because I ran out of juice right as I hit the line. But thankfully, the uh, lap regenerates your, or uh, re it regenerates your allotment, I guess you could say, of hybrid boost battery. So we can use it again as we head down the Dunlop curves here. Very high commitment circuit here. Really a lot of, or used a lot of hybrid boost there. I was worried the game was going to give me a penalty again for cutting at Tet Rouge there, or Tetra Rouge, but I thankfully did not, I guess, according to the game, did not cut there, so we're good. But look at the Porsche pull away down the straightaway. Just a little bit of hybrid to squeeze off of the corner. Not going to quite cut the mustard though, the Porsche is still pulling away down the straight. I'm going to have to gain a bunch of hybrid boost back here in the second leg of the chicane. Kind of breaking early on the hybrid. You can see the four-wheel drive kick in and it gave me a penalty. Screw it, we're going to keep going. We are going to keep going. I, I'm not slowing down for that crap. That is unacceptable penalty system right there. If you give me a second penalty, I don't, I don't care. Go ahead and give me a penalty. Unless it gives me a drive-through, in which case. Okay, it gave me a one-second penalty. So I've got to now win this race by one second, <laughs> which is essentially what we're going to try to do. Thankfully, I think the gaps aren't going to be quite a second. Once we get to the end of this thing, I'm just tired of restarting the race for penalties. Because uh, you may know, I'm going to let you behind the curtain here. I've just started this race a few times. Let's just say that. So let's not do that. We're going to go racing. You may notice the sun is already beginning to set. Of course, we're going to be doing a full day-night transition in this race. So that's going to be fairly exciting. There's also going to be some fog at night, and that may be right when we catch the GTE cars. So that's going to be an experience. I'm going to try to use the Porsche curves as much as I can. I feel like I can really get on these guys through here if I get it right. Flat out, flat out on the hybrid boost, out of it. Do not give me a penalty, do not give me a penalty, do not give me a penalty. Thankfully, it did not give me a penalty up to the sixth gear. That's kind of surprising. Using the hybrid boost all the way across the line. So I didn't don't have a whole lot left for the uh, Dunlop curves, but screw it. Figure that out when we get there. Of course, I could guess I could use the old-fashioned right. It's going to give me another penalty. Screw it. We're just going to keep taking penalties. We're Darth Vader. We don't have to. We don't have to follow your rules, game. Look at that run I'm getting on the Porsche here. Should be able to. Oh no, I'm not going to be able to catch him. He's using hybrid. He's using hybrid halfway down the straight. That's cheeky. That's very cheeky. As he pulls away down the straightaway.
two second penalty. First warning for exceeding track limits. So I've now gotten a warning plus a two second penalty. Interesting. So when are they gonna black flag me? I imagine it would be pretty, pretty soon. So we've gotta be real careful about the track limits as well. I just love the fact that I need to be cautious of that. Who's that WEC? Who's the WEC race director? Can't remember his name. It's like Augusto something. Yeah, he's he's not really taken to me too kindly, is he? Right now. But regardless, we're able to hang just with these guys. Will I be able to catch them back up though? I, I just don't know. I guess it depends where their hybrid boost is distributed and where they catch lap traffic because that is going to be a key later on in this race. It is a bit disappointing and disheartening to see those lights disappear into the distance. We'll have to deal with it for now as we head down into Arnage. That was decent through there. Again, got to get the Porsche curves right. I clearly made up a lot of time on the Porsche the last time through the uh, Dunlop chicane complex. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Traction control is kicking in there. I'm really taking a lot out of it. I took way too much out of it actually, honestly, there. That's better. That's better. Oh, man. Just really abusing the curbs. Really abusing the curbs. All right, I'm going to dump the whole thing into the front straightaway. I think I can make up enough hybrid juice over the course of the braking all the way up to Molson. It won't be that bad. We'll see. definitely did not cut there so game if you're gonna be a pansy about that I've got other words for you oh, so he really took a big risk through there take another big risk through there don't give me a penalty there we go <laughs> I'll take the penalty give me a three second penalty I don't give I don't give a crap game go ahead hit me with your best shot and the wheel's starting to vibrate. The old Jeep 920 bug. It's always so much fun. And uh, you may have noticed I just dumped an entire hybrid battery into this leg of the Molson. I'm going to start experimenting with this because clearly it's working for the AI to do that. And I wonder how much they're exceeding the track limits. Are they getting penalties? I certainly hope so. I right, did not extend the track limits there at all. So don't you give me that crap, game. We go up into sixth gear over the crest of the hill. I gotta be careful though. I think it's three strikes and you're out. Presumably, since it's night, we're about halfway through the race. So we've got one strike to go. Yeah, we're doing all right right now. Just holding on to the back of the pack here. Yeah, I'm just kind of hoping they get held up by traffic. Hybrid. Down the run to Porsche curves, and you can see how dark it is on this part of the circuit. 
I feel like eventually, with the way they've been uh, improving, quote unquote, the safety at Le Mans, I have a feeling at some point they're going to light this whole track. Watch me be right about that. I hope I'm not. But you never know with the FIA involved. Nope, that's going to be a penalty. That is going to be a penalty. Yep. There, I slowed down. I slowed down, game. Did you like that? You like screwing me over, game? Well, we gotta abuse the hybrid across the line. Somehow it didn't run out for me on that lap, so that's kind of interesting. safe through there. I was safe through there. I tried to be safe. And I don't know if it really worked out for me. We'll see. We'll see down the Molson. I feel like I definitely lost some time. Definitely lost some revs breaking through there. You can just see the, the headlights are gone, or the taillights are gone. You just see them heading off into the chicane right there. Really get a big launch off of the chicane. Still not quite on the back of the field. Well, it's my best, so I guess I did okay. But that may have been because I abused the hybrid, and now I'm starting to see some fog rolling in. Halfway through the race, and the hybrid saved me right there because I. I had it slid, or I had it sliding, and then I hit the hybrid, it gave me four-wheel drive, and away we went. 400 horsepower going to the front, about 600 going to the rear, and goodness gracious, look at this. It's a bit froggy out, no doubt about it, but I am seeing brake lights, so I'm closing in to the cars ahead of me. Again, I just hope those GT cars work the way I hope they do, and they jam the field up just a little bit so I can close in. Break way too early for that. breaking too early as a result of not being able to see the freaking apex of the corner. Speaking of which, we're going down to the Porsche Curves. Absolutely fog covering this circuit now. So this is going to be a lot of muscle memory right here. My muscle memory was not very good. I missed the missed the apex in the, turn, the first turn of the Porsche Curves by a country mile, but at least I'm in them now and I know where I'm going here. trouble the last time with track limits. This time, not so unlucky. I see an awful lot of brake lights up there. Might mean the leaders are in GT traffic. Let's see what the fastest lap is. 321. Yeah, I kind of figured the race pace would be about 320. I'm about two seconds off of what I can really run here. So I'm going to try to see if I can find it. I'm not going to use any hybrid down here. I feel like that was a fatal mistake the last time. In terms of some of my lap time, they go through here without any hybrid or with hybrid. Still see no brake lights though. I've, I've lost time. I've definitely lost time through here. Through sector one. At least I think the fog is going to end up clearing up pretty quick. And we'll be back on the road again. I'm 
using the hybrid once again out of the first chicane. Again, kind of going against my own advice earlier in this video, but we'll see how it goes. Again, I've got three seconds worth of penalties or whatever as well to deal with, so that's not going to be the most fun thing in the entire world come the end of this race. Neither was outbreaking myself into that part of the chicane. The entry to the second chicane. I always do that. I always break uh, way too late, usually, into there. And I always find that chicane's a bit slower than the first one. I'm not exactly sure why, but... That is my personal experience, anyway. I feel like the fog is, is maybe putting a bit of a uh, kind of a worse uh, feeling or a worse look to my gap between me and the car ahead than otherwise would be. I feel like the fog is keeping me from seeing the brake lights ahead of me. As we were in the chicanes, I saw the cars ahead of me, but that ditching it off in the, the gravel here is not going to help. That's the first time I've done that. Break too early the last time and well, I, I don't know what I'm doing here. Being absolute crap. My tires, no, my tires are fine, so yeah, I'm just being stupid. Just being stupid. We should be catching the, the back of the field pretty soon here, though. As the sun's beginning to rise. You usually catch GT traffic in a 30-minute race. I guess just in any race in general, about 20 minutes in. Especially when you have to run as small of a grid as I do in Project Cars 2. I'm sure if we were at a 32-car grid, we'd already, we'd already be in line traffic. That's interesting. Fastest final sector of anybody. Some good motivation. It's a shame the second sector was slower than anybody else because of my uh, mistake at Indianapolis. It was absolutely awful through there. If I'm gonna do that, I might as well use the freaking brakes. You know what I mean? Oh, God almighty. Still running down the straightaway, still not really seeing any cars of any ilk, not GT nor prototype. I'd actually love it if the prototype cars find our GT friends in the Porsche curves. Hopefully this lap. I feel like I'm running a pretty decent lap right now. Yeah, we're, we're half a second over. Oh, we got a four second penalty, okay. Yeah, and you can see the group of cars on the map there. We're not that far behind. If, if the lap traffic causes them any... Any hold up. We'll be good as the sun starts to come out, so hopefully I can be a little more confident in my uh, placing of the car, placement of the car, I should say. As we head over the crest of the hill. That's where the old signaling pits are, or were on the uh, 71 version of the track. Oh, that sun is glorious right now. Definitely needed to see that here in the morning at Le Mans. All right. You think my wish is coming true? They're catching, oh yeah, they're caught lap traffic and right in the Porsche curves, exactly what I wanted. 
exactly what I wanted. Now I've got to hope that I don't get held up too much by the cars ahead of me. But you can see, look right there. The blue dots on the map are the GT cars. So we got to try to come through them as quickly as possible. We've got to use all of the road here at the Porsche Curves. down a gear there just so I wouldn't go off the edge of the circuit. Don't want that right now. The leaders are in pretty heavy traffic. So the first GT car I'm coming up on is right over here. Got to make sure I don't get Alan McNish down here. I'm kind of suspecting I'm going to catch him as we head through the Dunlop curves here. It's a Beamer. Oh, this is exactly the Alan McNish situation. Really, 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 really shoved it in deep there. Probably shouldn't have done that. And I had to lift off to the freaking corner. The leaders are in lap traffic, but they're not really catching them in a spot that's going to be detrimental to them. Well, maybe. They're caught them, they've caught them in the chicane. I don't know. We'll see. Got a Ford right here. Should be able to get around him nice and easy, and he lets me by, so thank you, Ford. Appreciate that. And yeah, they're still in heavy traffic. The leaders are still in heavy traffic. So come on, come on. They even want some positions. But I'll have to give back because of the penalties anyway, but screw it. Right now, we don't have to worry about that. Uh, the leaders look like they've gotten through the traffic. Darn it. Gosh darn it. Four minutes and 30 seconds to go in the race. It's about two laps to go. We are closing them down. We've been able to get through the traffic, I think, a little bit better. Then the opposition just kind of got to hope that they get held up all the way into the Porsche curves, but I'm just not confident about that. We'll see. Lots of GT traffic right here. Use the curves. Just look at the difference in speed, and this is going to be a lot. I'm going to get screwed by this. This is the whole GT field that I'm going to have to come through in the Porsche. Well, this will be exciting, no doubt about it. Please see me, please see me. Thank you. Oh, boy. Oh, I had to get on the brakes there. That is, uh, that is intense. That is very intense. Bet you I'm not going to get him. Three minutes to go. Oh, I shouldn't have shoved it in there. That was a bad idea. Look at this. Look how much time I lost in the GT traffic. That's what I was hoping would happen to the leaders, but it did not. So this may or may not be the final lap. I'm not really sure. We'll see as the leaders cross the line. make up for lost time by using some hybrid there. Braked a little bit to give me some hybrid boost. Yeah, they're just up the road. They're just up the road. Actually a second up on my previous lap, but then again that had GT traffic involved in it, so 
who knows exactly how that's all going to work out. Lap number nine, we may get to 10 laps. May get to 10 laps. I did fuel the car for 10 laps, by the way, so we won't run out. Like that Texas IndyCar race. And I was worried that it was going to give me a penalty there because I thought I was pretty wide on the exit of the chicane, but thankfully, it's all copacetic right now. Nice, bright, sunny day out. Just a little Sunday drive, friends. Point eight up on the last lap, and again, they're just up there. They're just heading into the Molson hairpins. We're not really that far behind. Or what? Probably 11 seconds behind. Yeah, this is probably the last lap. I'm guessing by the time they get around, they're not going to complete another lap. At least not in 50 seconds, 45 seconds. Yeah, this is the last lap. So, boy, I hope those guys don't race each other well and they wreck each other or something in the Porsche curve so I can gain at least one position. Just one position. Boosting. Just not close enough. Just not close enough. I'm so half a second up on my best lap. Part of that is probably because the fuel is burning off. If I could run a really good time through here, that would at least make up something, right? A little bit of a slide through there. Pitch it in. Not bad on the hybrid boost. the first apex. Didn't miss it that time, and we crossed the line. What did I do? 319. Told you I could run those. Well, the Toyota, despite being the only uh, car of its make in the race, managed to take the victory over Max Throttle in uh, the uh, other Audi with the Le Mans spec. And then my pal Umer in third place in the Porsche. Uh, he raced me clean, so uh, that's I guess that's why he wasn't spotting for me today. Uh, then we've got the, uh, as kind of predictable, we've got the Fuji spec Audi kind of bringing up the rear of the AI cars, and then me sitting there in sixth place overall. But the lap time, as you can see, is right there with the rest of the field. It's kind of a shame that I made so many mistakes, so I think I would have been right there. And in the GT category, we had one of the Beamers winning, and... Uh, Pretty diverse class, at least this time, with the Ferrari in there, the Ford, the Chevrolet. But uh, yeah, it was BMW, which is kind of interesting. Is that a prediction? Are we predicting? Oh, God, we are. Predicting Toyota and BMW will win at Le Mans this year. So that was the absolutely diabolical-looking Audi R18 from 2016. I hope you enjoyed this video. It wasn't the best driving from me. It wasn't the fastest driving from me. But uh, I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. It was definitely some interesting, close-fought racing, at least early on in the race. Look at this, side-by-side, 200-mile-an-hour -side, pace lap on lap one. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe for more Project Cars, Le Mans, and motorsport content. And we'll see you in the next video.